Guys, it's that time of year again. It is the start of the Premier League season. And of course, when there's a Premier League season starting, what do I have to do? I come here for you guys and do a Premier League predictions video. So last year, didn't do too bad. I predicted two of the uh, three teams to go down. Not in the correct positions. I got Huddersfield right. I didn't get Cardiff right, I remember. Predicted the top two right, which was pretty easy to predict, to be honest. And... This year, again, we're back, and you guys are going to see who I've gone for. So let's start off with the bottom three. Who are you going to go? That is my bottom three for this season. So in last place, we've got Sheffield United. Don't get me wrong. Sheffield United, great team in the championship last season, scoring goals for fun. Pretty stable at the back. However, the Premier League is a big jump up. And I don't think they've strengthened defensively. Yes, they brought in Phil Jagielka on a free. However, you know, they've brought in the likes of Mousse. Mousse is a decent backup striker for a Premier League team. McBurney, proven championship goal scorer. Billy Sharp, pretty good experienced striker. But I don't think Sheffield United have what it takes to stay in the Premier League. So I'm going to put them in the last position. And in 19th, just above that, I'm going to put Brighton. Now, Brighton last year didn't were very close to getting relegated because they had a terrific start, but they plummeted towards the end. I think this season is going to be very difficult. They have signed Neil Mopé, a very good striker. Once again, he's done it at a championship level. Can he do it in the Premier League? We'll have to find out. But I just don't think they've strengthened the squad that well. £20 million on a centre-back, Adam Webster, for Bristol City. £20 million. I know Harry Maguire went to Man U for 80 million, which is ridiculous money, but 20 million for someone who's not even, you know, proven at all, really. It's madness, to be honest. I th and then they've brought in Trossard. I don't even know who the heck he is. 15 million. I mean, you know, is there anybody else I've missed out here for Brighton? Yeah, none of that. Aaron Moy on loan is a decent midfield option, however. And it's a str it was a strange one, sacking... Chris Hutton to um, make Graham Potter the manager, someone with no experience in the Premier League, one, one season of managing championship team Swansea, who must have been content with Swansea coming 11th or 10th, which is not good at all. So I don't know how they decided to choose that one. I mean, I know Chris Hutton's football was very negative. However, for a team like Brighton, he had to really do that, to be honest. He, he, he keeps teams up, Chris Hutton. However, they've gone with Graham Potter, so this year I think they're going to come 19th and 18th. I've gone for Norwich just to miss out on staying up, and I think it's going to be very tight. Don't get me wrong, I think Norwich, winning the league last season, brilliant. They haven't invested in their squad enough. Dermich, good solid striker, good solid attack. I think he's like a striker, centre-forward type player. Decent, he scores goals. Can he do it in the Premier League? You know, they've brought in Patrick Roberts on loan from Man City. Not really done much. And Foreman on loan is a good goalkeeper option. But, I mean, the rest of the squad is light. The midfield... I mean, Puki was very good up, up front in the Championship. Will he do it in the Premier League? Though I, don't, I think they could struggle, Norwich. I'd like to see them stay up, but I don't think they will. In 17th, I have gone with Burnley. Now, this is a big decision. Right, we're going to go... We're going to have a look at the team from 13th to 17th. So in 17th, I have gone with Burnley just to stay up because I don't think they've invested that well. Drinkwater, he's all right on loan maybe three, four years ago. I mean, he hasn't played the Premier League game in two seasons. I mean, once a midfielder worth £30 million. Now, just, if, they did, if they did this deal two years ago, I would have thought, ah, oh, this is a really good signing. But is he that good? I'm not so sure. And they've let go Tom Heaton, their best goalkeeper in my opinion, to Villa, a rival club in the Premier League, which was a stupid decision, I think, to be honest, for Burnley's perspective. They brought in Eric Peters, a player who never really made it in the Premier League. Peacock Farrell, goalkeeper, probably third choice. And then you've got uh, Jay Rodriguez. I think he could get the odd goal, not many though, maybe 
he won't get more than 10, 15 goals in a season. So I think Burnley could struggle this season just because they haven't invested enough in their squad when they've needed to. So I'm going to put them 17th. Now in 16th, I've gone with Palace. If Zaha left, I would have put Palace in the relegation. However, I think that them keeping Zaha will give them a boost. And I think he'll give 100%. I mean, they have made some good signings, Palace. Bringing in Jason... James, not Jason. James McCarthy on loan. No, was it on loan? No, permanent transfer, sorry. Brought in James McCarthy in midfield. Who is a very, very solid central midfielder. Um, They've still got Ben Teke. They've still got Jordan... They've brought Jordan Ayew went on a permanent, which is not bad. Losing Batshuayi, who scored a lot of crucial goals for them, who they had on loan last season, is a bit of a blow. Uh, obviously, they've lost Juan Pesaka. They haven't really strengthened that position. They haven't brought anyone there. They've brought in Camarasa again, did quite well for Cardiff last season. So, I think 16th is a fair reflection. I don't think they're going to get relegated, but they will be in that relegation dogfight. In 15th, I'm going to go Southampton. Now, Southampton is a very, very tricky one to predict because I think that they're decent. However, the squad just every season just doesn't seem to be doing well. Like, they've got Lamina, they've got Danny Yings, they've signed Shea Adams. I think he could have very good potential. Again, not proven in the Premier League yet, but I think that Shea Adams looks like a very good striker from what I've seen at Birmingham because he's done it for year after year for quite a few years now. Um, but really, apart from that, I mean, they haven't made too many other drastic signings. Obviously, signing Danny Ings on a permanent deal. Um, there was talk of them letting go of their goalkeepers, which they haven't done. And apart from that, they haven't really... They've let go of Charlie Austin, who I thought was a good backup striker to have, come off the bench, get Nick a goal. They've let him go. So, I think 15th is a fair reflection. I think Ralph Hassan, Hassan Hootl, I think that's his name, how you pronounce that, I have no idea. Um, I think he's a good manager. I think he can keep Southampton up again. But I think Southampton really need to get their act together with uh, being up the table. Because at one point they were battling for Europa League and places like that a couple of years ago. So, a lot can change. But in 14th, I've gone with Aston Villa. Now, people said that Villa could become the next Fulham. I don't think so. I think they've made some good signings, personally. They have spent a lot of money, though, which is a bit of an issue, obviously, how they're going to earn that money back, obviously, from Premier League TV and that, but they've spent over £130 million, I think, around that. Bringing in players like Douglas Weese, who's got potential, Nakamba, decent midfielder. Um, Wesley, solid, solid Brazilian striker. I think he could do very, very well for them. Grealish, obviously, they've still got. Tom Heaton in goal, very good signing, very good goalkeeper. Matt Target, I think they're slightly overpaid for him, 17 million. Um, Tyron Mings cost them around 26 and a half, which it was good to get him back, but I think if they could have got him for a bit less, it would have been better. Um, they've brought in other players like Engels as well. They've brought in Trezeguet, Jota, um... So I think they've got a decent, decent squad, and I think they'll ha they'll definitely have enough to stay up. I think Villa, this is a decent season for them. So I'm going to say 14th. In 13th, I've gone with my club, Newcastle United. Now, the reason I have gone 13th is, to be honest, when, when the transfer window started, and when Rafa left, and we saw Perez and Hosselu, I thought, oh, this is going to be a nightmare, and Diame left as well, being released. But... We've actually signed some good players, which is not normal for us. We've signed some really good players. Like, Joel Linton, yes, 40 million is a lot of money for someone who's hardly not proven. But if it works out, it's going to be a great signing. St. Maximan, I really rate this kid. I think he could be Ben Arthur 2.0. He looks very, very skillful. Um, we've signed a right back who I've never heard of. Krath, I've, you know. Um... And we've also signed Willems on a season-long loan. I've rated this left-back for years. And I've always wanted Newcastle to bring in full-back options. And we've done that. We've brought, two, we've brought in two solid... Well, a full-back I've never heard of. And a very good full-back. So, we're strengthening the squad. We're not just adding numbers. We're strengthening it. And Andy Carroll has been brought back to his hometown club on a free. I'm very happy about this. Because I like Carroll and I was good when he left Newcastle at the time. 
Unfortunately, he's just a bit too injury prone. If you can keep Andy Carroll fit, he can be a very, very good player. And he can come off the bench and get you some goals. And he can even start some games this season. I think we've got to play him in the Cups. I think we've got to give him match time in the Cup games. I mean so, yeah, as I was saying, Andy Carroll, I think, you know... Um, it, it's a good signing on a free as well. I think it's a pay-as-you-play contract as well, so he's not just picking up wages every week for, for for basically being injured. So if we can keep him fit, it's a very, very good backup option of a striker. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the business we've done. And Steve Bruce, I think we just need to give him the time, even though, looking at it, yes, we've gone from Rafa Benitez to Steve Bruce. I know there's a big, big uh, margin, but... You've got to give Bruce a chance. I want us to play attacking football. That's the only thing that Rafa didn't always play. He played a defensive style. I'm not always for a defensive style. But if Bruce can um, play attacking football and get us good results, I think 13th is a realistic and fair place for us this season. So in 12th, I am going to go with Watford. Javi Gracia, decent manager. He's done well. See, this was my problem last season. I predicted Watford to be very, very far down. I'm not going to make the same mistake. Yes, they've signed Craig Dawson. He's, he's, he's an alright defender. You know, Danny Welbeck on a free is a very good signing. They've also signed Saw on a club record deal of around 30 million. Don't really know much about him, so I cannot really comment on this player. But to me, they've not lost any key players, really. So, they've done... They've had an okay summer, Watford, but they haven't they haven't strengthened much, but they haven't really lost anyone. So I can't call it a bad summer for Watford. So I think they're going to finish just a bit lower from where they were last season. I think they're going to be 12th. In 11th, someone I had much lower last season, I said for them to get relegated actually, Bournemouth. Bournemouth have strengthened again, bringing in Billing from Huddersfield. I think he's a decent midfielder. 15 million is quite a lot low, but... He's very young, I think he's 22, 23 years of age. He's decent. Um, who else have Bournemouth brought in, actually? I haven't really. Uh, Lloyd Kelly from Bristol City, yeah, I remember the left back. Decent, I think he costs around 20 million, maybe a bit expensive. Obviously, they lost Mings and Mousset. Mousset didn't really get played. I think Harry Wilson is a very, very good signing on loan. He will play a big part in their season. And Jack Stacey from Luton Town for around five million, I think it was. Just just a squad number backup option, and I think that's a very good sign. So I think Bournemouth have done some good bit of business this window. So in tenth, I'm gonna go with West Ham. Around the same place, I think the exact same place place to finish last season. They've lost on Outovich. He was a bit of a troublemaker in the squad. He was like that Stoke as well. So just get him. Get him away, you know, sell him. Best for the squad, you know, the players wanted him out. Uh, they let go Adrian, who I thought was a decent backup option of a goalkeeper. He's now going to Liverpool, which is surprising, on a free. Um, they've let go Lucas Perez. Andy Carroll's obviously been released. but they've And they've let go Pedro Obiang, but they've strengthened. They've brought in Pablo Fornals, very good central midfielder. Spanish. I, I highly rate him. I think he's got potential. Sebastian Holler for £45 million. This could be this could go really really well or not. I think he will do well for them if he gets the service provided to him. And he could potentially score 15 20 goals a season. He's a very very good striker. And he's a very good finisher. They've also brought in another backup striker. I think he was from the Turkish league. Don't really know much about him, can't comment, but I think Hola is a very very good signing. Hala Hola, I don't really know. But I think he's a very good signer. Have they signed anybody else? Uh, Roberto, goalkeeper Cardoso, is just a backup centre-back youth. So, I think they've had a good good summer, um, West Ham. So, I've put them 10th, based on the summer as well, and last season. In 9th, I'm going to go for Wolves. They're not going to repeat their success of getting in the Europa League. I think the Europa League could hurt them slightly, the midweek games, with them having such a small squad. But they have made some good signings as well. I think it was strange letting out Cavalero on loan. I think they let, let out Helder Costa as well. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, but they've signed Patrick Cotrione. Very, a very highly, highly rate this striker. Um, 
Most of these are merely youth, really, I think I can see here. Vallejo, very, very good Real Madrid centre-back on loan. It's very good signing. Obviously, Dendonka on a permanent and Jimenez on a permanent. So they've not really lost many people apart from, like I said, Helder Costa on loan and Cavalero on loan, I think. That was a strange one, really. Uh, so, I think ninth is a fair reflection. I think Nuno Espirito Santo has done a very, very good job with Wolves, and I think he can continue that with another top-half finish. In eighth, just missing out on the Europa League spot, I'm going to go with Leicester. Leicester, again, strengthened, brought in Yuri Tillemans, beat lots of top clubs to this kid. Fantastic, fantastic signing. Um, signed a Jose Perez from Newcastle. Interesting to see how he does. Uh... Obviously, Harry Maguire is gone, <coughs> but 80 million for Harry Maguire. They obviously didn't buy anyone with that money as a centre-back. But I think they've got a strong squad, uh, Leicester, and I really rate Brendan Rodgers, and I think he'll do very, very well with his team, obviously, with Vardy, Madison as well. Still there, chill well at the back. Pereira. They've got a very, very good squad, Leicester. So I've gone with it. In 7th, Everton. Everton have bought really, really, really well this summer. And I think they'll get in the Europa League. So, the reason I say that, brought in Andre Gomez on a permanent. Played well for them last season. Uh, they couldn't get Zuma back on, lo uh, back on loan or a permanent, which will hurt them a little bit. But they do have Yerry Mina, Michael Keane. They do have options at the back. Um... Moise Keane, very, very good forward, 30 million. I think he could do very, very well for Everton. Maybe he may not get 15, 20 goals this season or something like that, but he's only young. I think he's 18, 19. He's got a lot, a lot of potential. Um, Alex Awobi, very, very good signing as well. Hurting one of your other teams, Arsenal. But obviously Arsenal do have other options, but I think that's a very another very good signing for Everton. Um, Sidibe on loan as well Very good right back option To compete with um, Coleman Lerzo, backup goalkeeper Decent on a free as well And Gabimin Centre mid to replace Idrissa Gay That will hurt them a lot Letting him go But I think they've replaced him quite well They've let go James McCarthy as well Ashley Williams has gone But they weren't really key members of the squad and they've brought in Fabian Delph in the midfield as well who could play a very good part with his experience obviously being at Man City for a long time with his experience he could help Everton out and I think Everton can finally get back into a European spot depending on whether whoever wins the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup in sixth I have gone with Man United they said this was a big big summer for them but they haven't really bought that many good players. Juan Basaka is a good signing. 50 million though. 50 million. And Jao Cancelo cost 26 plus Danilo. Is Cancelo a better left back, right back, sorry, than uh, Juan Basaka? Yes, definitely. Daniel James, 18 million on a winger who's had one good season. I mean, he's got potential. It's a decent signing, but money wise, I'm not talking about. And Harry Maguire, 80 million is a lot. When you've got David Luiz going to Arsenal, which is one of the signings of the summer, summer value for money-wise, I think. Eight million for a Champions League, Europa League winner, and a Premier League winner. You ain't going to get better than that as a deal for a centre-back. Eight million. And Arsenal have took him off their rival as well, who can't buy another defender. Who I didn't. Obviously, they have, they've had a transfer ban, so they couldn't buy anyone. So I think Man U haven't really strengthened that, that much. And letting go Lukaku as well, was they didn't replace him either. So I think they've got lack of, depth, lack of depth up front. And Lukaku being sold will hurt them a lot. In fifth, I'm going to go with Chelsea. The reason I've gone with Chelsea is because I, th I think fifth would be a good season for Frank Lampard. Because he can't, he can't buy anyone. So, and he's, David Luiz is gone. Uh, Hazard, their best player for the last like six, seven years, is now gone. So what can you really, what can you really do? He can't really do anything, Frank Lampard. He's got to use the players come back from the youth and the loan. You know the likes of Tammy Abraham, Bachuai, Bakayoko. I think 
would be a good shout for him to maybe get some game time. Um, you know, Kennedy's back, people like that, Zuma as well. So I think Chelsea have got a good squad. I'm just in, and Pulisic as well, obviously, they signed, and just before the transfer ban and Kovacic. So I think they've got a good I do think they'll just, just miss out on a top four position. Right, in fourth, I have gone with Arsenal. Here's my top four. In fourth, I've gone with Arsenal. The reason I've gone for Arsenal finishing the top four, they've made some good signings. Early in the window, it was looking like they're not going to make many good signings. But late in the window, they signed William Saliba, who's gone back on loan, to, uh, I think it was St. Etienne. So he could be a decent setup. I don't really know much about him. Nicolas Pepe is a very, very good signing. Scoring a lot. He can score a lot of goals. So him, Aubameyang, Lacazette up front could be deadly this season. Uh, they've brought in Ceballos from Real Madrid. Good, solid midfielder on loan. Um, I've also strengthened left back with Kieran Tierney. Very, very good youngster as well. He's quite young. 22, 23, I think, around that. For a decent fee as well. And David Luiz, like I talked about before, what a signing for 8 million. They needed a centre-back after Koscielny left for around 4 or 5 million. And they've got him for just double if not less than double the price, so I think it's been a good summer for Arsenal, and I predict them to come fourth for Emery to finally, and I think if Emery, again, strengthens the season after, I think they could be in with a chance, Arsenal, of getting into that top bracket, that top three, but third, I'm going to go with Tottenham, the reason I've gone with Tottenham, Tottenham have been linked with some very, very high-profile names, Diabala, Coutinho, but they've also done really well with who they've signed. Lo Celso on loan, very, very good centre mid. And Dombele, he's a very, very hard-working midfielder. He's a, he's probably as, around as good as Kante for his ball-winning ability, so I think that is a very, very good signing for Tottenham. I think losing Lorente and Janssen means they've only got Kane really up front. I mean, Lucas and Son can play there, but that lack of depth up front... If Kane does get injured again, that could hurt them. But I do think Tottenham have got a very, very good squad. Uh, letting go Vorm, I mean, they've got they've got Gazanesia as their second choice. But letting go, I think, and, and they obviously signed Ryan Sessegnon, which I thought was a very good signing. But letting go um, Kieran Trippier was a very strange one, especially for 20 million. This is what I mean. 20 million for Kieran Trippier, but 50 for Wamba Saka is mental. And they didn't buy a right back, which I found very strange. But they've got Aurier, Walker Peters, to be fair, so they're not weak in right back. So I think this could be a very, very good season for Tottenham. I think Tottenham could even They could even even challenge for even the title this season. They could do. But in second I'm gonna go with Liverpool. They haven't really bought anyone but they haven't really lost anyone they've lost storage released wasn't really a big part of their squad um they've lost moreno again backup wasn't really a big part of the squad they've brought in adrian on a free harvey elliott youngster he's not gonna get played and van der Berg's not gonna get played so they haven't really done anything liverpool which i think they needed to do i think they needed an out and out striker or to drop firmino back in the car maybe or buy a very good attacking midfielder because from their midfield you look at it and you think who's going to score Wijnaldum barely Milner ba barely is going to score so I look I look at other clubs like Chelsea who's going to score from the midfield Barkley you know I can see um Kovacic popping up with a goal you know Man, Man City Bernardo Silva De Bruyne um a lot of players for Man City that can pop up with goals Gundogan uh, Rodri, who they've just signed, and that's why I've gone with Man City for first, because they have strengthened, which you probably thought they didn't need to, but they have. They've brought in Cancelo at right back, what a signing. Um, they've brought in Angelino at left back, again, not bad, he was already at the club a few years ago, to get him back for quite a cheap value is very good. Uh, Rodri, fantastic midfielder option, to add with the likes of David Silva, De Bruyne, Fernandinho, Bernardo Silva, Man City are going to be very, very strong. Obviously, they've lost Sane for seven months around that, with him damaging, I think it was ACL, which will hurt City, but they've got the likes of 
Mares, they've got Jesus, they've got Aguero, they've got Sterling, they've got a lot of options. It won't really hurt City. And obviously, they also signed Scott Carson on loan, which I thought was a very, very strange decision. But hey, do what you like, Man City. I don't mind. And obviously, losing company was a big, big loss. But I think Man City will do it for a third year in a row. So guys, that is my Premier League predictions video. If you guys have enjoyed the video, please smash the like button. Comment below if you disagree with any of these decisions I have made. This video should be out. I'm going to say this now. It should be out before the end of the first Premier League game, which is against Liverpool, or before the kickoff. Just you guys. I mean, I can't really cheat or anything, but I, li I like to do it before the first game. So thank you all for watching, guys. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.